me. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts in praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice, Jesus made me glad. He has made me glad, yes, he has made me glad. Oh, I do rejoice, Jesus made me glad, glad, glad. Jesus made me glad, yes, he has made me glad. I do rejoice, Jesus made me glad. Oh, I do rejoice, Jesus made me glad. Yes, I rejoice, Jesus made me glad. Amen. Has he made you happy? Happy, happy, happy. Hey, Amen, John. That's right. Happy, happy, happy. Let's all go down to the river. There's a man who's walking on the water. Ah, oh, now come along with me. For I want to see this man walking on the water. Let's all go down to the river. There's a man who's walking on the water. All oh, now come along with me. For I want to see this man walking on the water. He can raise the dead from the grave. Change the water and turn it into wine. He can make the lame walk. He can make the dumb talk. Open up the eyes of the blind. So let's all go down to the river. There's a man who's walking on the water. Oh, now come along with me. For I want to see this man walking on the water. Jesus is the man at the river. And he's washing people's sins away. He can save your soul if you give him control and be ready for the judgment day. So now let's all go down to the river. There's a man who's walking on the water. Yes, now come along with me. For I want to see this man walking on the water. Let's all go down to the river. There's a man who's walking on the water. Oh, now come along with me. For I want to see this man walking on the water. Yes, Jesus is walking on the water. Amen. Have you seen him walking on the water? If you haven't saw Jesus walking on the water yet, maybe you haven't got into your storm of life. Now, the story with that storm of life deal was that the ghost upon the sea is why the disciples were so disturbed when Jesus came walking on the water is because the old saying was that if you ever saw the ghost of the sea it was over you was dead there was no hope for you but what the disciples didn't realize was that what they called the ghost was the true ghost and he was there to deliver them out of their storm and out of their trials. He was not there to destroy them. Why do people still want to run around and call him the Holy Spirit, which is correct, instead of saying the Holy Ghost is because they don't understand that that Holy Ghost will scare the devil out of you. It will make a change because everybody's scared of a ghost. Everybody say, I'm not scared of ghosts. I'm not afraid, but you let something happen in the dark of the night. Huh? 
like my daddy said that when he was a little boy he was walking through them woods trying to get back home after it was dark he said that the cow bayed over there in the in the swamplands that they had I know that song's right here I'm looking for and he said when the cow bayed he told his feet he said I ain't scared but his feet didn't listen to him and he knocked the door completely off the hinges running in there well I know it's there and I cannot find it so I'm going to do it anyway then I'm going to get brother Matthew to come on up and do what he needs to do As a long last way you go Clouds may hide the light of day Just have no fear For friend you know clouds away love will roll your clouds away yes he will he'll turn the darkness into day and I'm so glad I now can say clouds away God is watching over all yes he is and he hears each time you pray just lift your voice in happy song and love will roll, love will roll your clouds away. And love will roll your clouds away. He'll turn your darkness into day. I'm so glad that I now can say Love has rolled, love has rolled my clouds away And love will roll your clouds away He'll turn your dark is in today I'm so glad I now can say love has rolled love has rolled our clouds away and I'm so glad that I now can say Love has rolled, love has rolled our clouds away. Amen. Yes, it is. talk to Aunt Net, she said they was right at 200 progenitors of Brother Red. Uh, all over the United States. Yes, 
it was. time too he's just bragged and bragged and bragged about it Disappointment, strife, and discontentment. I cast every care on the Lord. No matter what obsession, pain, or deep depression, standing on the solid rock. I'm standing oh, on the rock, rock of ages. From the storm oh, that, that rages, rages. Oh, I'm but not from Satan's wages, standing on the solid rock. Even though he's gone now, I don't feel alone now. Comfort came the Spirit of the Lord. With his word to guide me, and from temptation hide me, standing on the solid rock. I'm standing on the rock of ages, from the storm that rages, but not from Satan's wages, standing on the solid rock. Now I'm pressing onward, each day leads me homeward, I'm trusting in my Savior day by day. Close is our relation, firm is its foundation, on that solid rock I'll stay. I'm standing on the rock of ages, from the storm that rages, but not from Satan's wages, standing on that solid rock. From Satan's wages, standing on that solid rock. Amen. Sister Mary, you ain't been here in a while. You want to sing us a song this morning? Yeah. 
Give her a great big hand clap. watches and he knows what's best for me my greatest fear is knowing that and my greatest joy is knowing that he still cares for me that's just his way of telling me he loves me love beyond all human understanding oh i won't question trials that bring me to my knees that's just his way of telling me he loves me if I'm successful walking through the valley, you'll give me strength to climb the highest hill. The more I pray, the better He can mold me and change my life completely. To fit his perfect will That's just his way Of telling me he loves me Love beyond all human understanding Oh, I would question trials That bring me to my knees that's just his way of telling me he loves me that's just his way of telling me he loves me I'm going to dedicate this to my son. Oh, light me up in a prison and throw away the key. Take away the vision. From these eyes that now, now can see, oh, deprive me of the food I eat, and even tie my hands and feet, but as long as I know Jesus. I can still go free That I could still go free What kind of man Would reach down his hand And do this for me Oh, unworthy to live, I'm not fit to kill. Then a man on the cross put me in his will. He said that I could 
still go free Now I never could quite understand why a king would want to leave his throne to don the robe of an earthly man and feel the pain of flesh, flesh and bone. Then to lay or try that lonely path that led to Calvary. But those blood red stains all broke all of my chains so that I could steal That I could stay go free. What kind of man would reach down his hand and do this for me? Oh, unworthy to live. I'm not fit to kill. Then a man on the cross put me in his will. He said that I could still go free. He said that I could still go free. I'm free. start eating on Sundays a little bit at a time, but two weeks from now, Evelyn has to work next weekend, so it was planned just right. She said the 20th, uh, the church is going to have fellowship downstairs on that. On the 8th of August, we go into camp meeting. I don't know how long it's going to go yet. Uh, I've been suggested to stop it on Tuesday night. Eh, we'll just see what's happening. Uh, Daddy set it up for a seven-day meeting, and so we'll just see what happens on that time. In September, we're going to go into another meeting, and it's going to be a three-day meeting starting on a Friday night. It's either the 20th, 21st, and 22nd, or the 19th, 20th, and 21st, whatever that Friday night falls on to. I talked to uh, Sister Jeanette this morning. She's doing excellent, and uh, they re require still prayers for us as they're praying um, for us. They need prayers from us. Uh, Sister Green, which is Bill Green's grandmother, she fell the other day and broke her wrist, and she has to have surgery Tuesday. It, do, it wasn't doing right, so we want to... Uh, remember her on that. 
you might get me adjusted, Brother Matthew, if I say hallelujah, then we're all right. We ain't been able to use a microphone in the last few weeks and uh, don't want to get too loud. Um, but, you know, I want to do whatever the Lord wants us to do. Amen. I want to read a few scriptures this morning here. Now, the Lord's been dealing with me on two things. Uh, uh, yesterday I got up and I would rode over to mom and dad's for a little while and on the way over I started singing some words wonderful, wonderful, wonderful merciful God wonderful, wonderful, wonderful our Lord we ought to praise him Lord I ought to worship you I ought to just magnify your name and I've been dealing with a lot of things lately if you've been listening and paying attention and I hope that you have the, the church is sick the church is having problems you're sick you're having problems. We're, our health is not right. We're, we're not eating the right foods, and it's causing us to have all sorts of issues and all sorts of problems. And I was reading in Malachi this morning, and I was going over there, and it said that your bread has polluted my altars. And I was thinking about that, and I was going to preach on uh, what are we offering, what are we putting on the, on the altar of God? Why is God so concerned about us polluting the altar? And, and I said, well, Lord, is that what you want me to go with? And we started talking about the storms this morning. And the thing that God had been dealing with me on is two things. Uh, one is celebration. This has been the 4th of July. Did you have a good one? You know what made mine good? I have not heard one person that has passed. You don't know how joyful that is to me. Now, this year has been a sure enough, sure enough rough year already, and we're only seven months into it. So to hear nobody has died that I was close to. Now sad, we've had truck wrecks, we've had uh, ladies killed with, with their children in the vehicles the last week. I mean, it's terrible news out there, but at the same time, it, I have just buried some of my family. So I'm thinking, God, I didn't hear nothing about that. I still got a daughter that's a way that, believe me, we're in prayer about her, but she got offered a chance to go at how old is Leslie? Twelve? Eleven years old, her uncle decided that if we would let her go on a trip with, with his grandchildren, that he would pay for it. So she's actually doing something I never got to do in my life. Uh, she got to see what a big boat looks like this time. And, and actually, she got to see what two of them looks like. They've been on two boats, and um, it was designed for children. So she's enjoying that, and I'm praying about that. But I was thinking about a celebration and the storms of life. Now, we're sick, the church is sick, there's, their spirits are down, we're depressed, we're oppressed, and we've not been impressed in a while. Our bodies is running ragged, we're, we never have time to come home. We never have time to enjoy what, what, what we work for. How many of you has got a house that you go out and you work for every day and, and you try to keep the thing up? Don't you wish you could just stay at home and enjoy what you're working for? But you figure one day, huh? That's, you know, that's what bugs me about people. Uh, they, they go to get saved and they get saved and then their thing is, oh, sister, oh, brother, one day you'll get to enjoy what you're doing. Why can't you enjoy it now? Come on, bless you, Lord. Huh? Why you got to wait and die to go to heaven so you can enjoy what God's got for you? He wants you to have life and have it more abundant, and He wants you to have it now. Yeah. But I want to read this scriptures over here in St. Luke chapter 8. And how do you know, Brother Greg, that this is what the Lord wanted? Because the Bible opens straight up to it. I didn't have time to look the scripture up, and I didn't know where in the world it was at. I just know it was in there. But when I opened the Bible, Brother Matthew, this is where it fell. Luke chapter 8 starting at verse 22. Now it came to pass on a certain day. Did you catch that part? It wasn't just any day. But it came to pass on a certain day. You know the way that I see this? Brother Matthew was talking this morning in the Sunday school lesson, just touched a little bit on predestination. 
Do you know that everything that Jesus done as he walked on this earth from the time of of Adam in the very beginning until he left this old world the day that he ascended into heaven? Do you know that it was a preparation for you? Everything he done, there was none of it done for him, but it was for something that you was going through in your lifetime. This Bible has been a road map that you could always go back and find exactly where you're at and where you need to be and where you can go if you will only trust in the directions. So the Bible said it was on a certain day. He had it planned out that it was going to be just like it was. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples. That ship, what do you do? You get on a ship, you go out into the waters. What do we preach that waters is? Is that the sea is? It's a multitude of people. Thank you there, Brother Stan. At least one's paying attention. The sea always represents people. And the sea always represents you don't know what state of mind that the people are in. You ever been down to the ocean? Is it beautiful? Huh? Do you enjoy it? What about when the waves come? Huh? A little bit scary. Did y'all notice how cool the weather got the last day, uh, especially on the 4th of July? But that was because there was a hurricane in another state that drove in the calm breeze and the winds. Well, they weren't too happy with the way the ocean looked then. Some buddies of mine went down to Florida one time and they was out there and they decided to swim over to an island to look at some shells. And it was a nice little swim to get over there to that little island out there. And they jumped in the water and, and these old boys, they roughnecks like I grew up, they're my friends. So you can pretty much tell that, that uh, they were something like me. So they didn't think of no harm of the water because the water looks pretty. The water looks inviting. The water looks like, oh man, I just got to, it's so hot out here. It's so dry out here. If I can just get in the water, everything is all right. I can splash around. I have myself a good time. And they swam across that water over to that little island. They done what they was going to do. They jumped back in the water and they swam back across the water and got back on the shore. The next thing that they done, they saw this little parachute going out across the water. They call it a parasail, don't they? They, they saw this parasail going out across the water, and I told you, some old roughneck boys, we don't have parasails right here in the state of Georgia. So they decided, well, we'll go and get us a ticket, and we'll get on that parasail, and we will go and just watch what's going on. Well, my friend he went out and got on the first and then he flew out he come back he didn't open his mouth the next one got on the parasail and he went out and he come back and he looked at the first friend he said how crazy we was the third one couldn't get off the ground he's sort of big like me they couldn't get him up without him just smacking the dirt and it was a good thing because the third one was more like me. He was more scared than anything. But what my buddy told me, he said, Greg, when we got up in the parasail and we're flying across exactly where we just swam, he said there wasn't nothing but thousands of dark shadows under the water. You know what that meant? They had got there and swam over them sharks, dove back in the water and swam back over them sharks. But the greatest thing about it is the Lord protected them and they never even knew that they was in trouble. Now as we go to look right here, the Bible talked about that they went into a ship and went out on the water. They got into a covenant, they got into a covering that would protect them all the way through the stormy seas. And they would not drown. 
Can you get that this morning? They got out there amongst the world in a place, the Bible said, be you in the world, but don't be you of the world. So they had a covering. They had a thing of protection that guided and guarded and protected them. And the Bible said Jesus was with them. Now you try to get into your own covenant, you got problems. You're probably going to find out your boat will leak. But when Jesus is in the ship, you don't have concerns to be worried about. Why? Because you have the covenant giver. He's the one that built the ship. And if we will stay firm and found inside of him, he will be inside of us and we will be one and there's nothing that can destroy us. Got into the ship with his disciples and he said unto them, let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they lunched forth. We talked about John the Baptist this morning. He was the ending of the old religion. He was the ending of the old Levitical priesthood. He was the last coming up because there was a change coming on. Here Jesus is. He's telling the people, he said, Now look, we've been on this side of the water long enough. We've been on this side of the lake long enough, but there's a reason why I need to go to the other side. You know what? held on the other side of this boat keep on reading you'll find it out but on the other side of this lake was a man that was possessed of the demons and of the devils that the world had given up on but it was necessary that Jesus go and deliver him there's always a reason for everything that we go through huh there's always an other side of the problem. There's always another side of the lake. There's always a significance that we need to get further in God. He doesn't take us out just on a little old journey to make us feel better. There's a reason why we must go to the other side of the lake. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. Do you know that when you let down on God, you ever felt that you can't find God? You ever felt like He's nowhere near? You ever been to the church and you can't feel God? You ever been around your Christian friends and you can't feel the Spirit and the power of God? You ever been to a doctor and he gave you bad news and you wonder, oh God, where are you at? Lord, have you fell asleep? Have you left me? Have you done done away with me? Why can't I find your deliverance? Why can't I find your power? Why am I in a storm? Why am I having trouble? Why is there problems? Why is my children doing this? Why is this going on? Why is my car breaking down? Why can't I get a job? Why can't I do this? Lord, you have deserted me. The Bible said he was with you the whole time. But have you praised him? Have you worshipped him? Have you given him any reason to stay awake? Are you just bumping along and glad, well, I'm saved, and I guess I'll go through old life just the way it is. I won't need him no more. He was good enough to save me. I talked to a man the other day. He called me up. I didn't call him. This is the things that I really do like, Brother Matthew. He called me up and he said, Brother Greg, I was coming to church Sunday night. Now, y'all can imagine what I thought about it when he said that. Line reprobate. He said, I was coming to church, but I got busy working. First thing, what in the world are you doing trying to work? You don't work six days a week. What in the world makes you think you're going to work on the seventh? Huh? But I'm nice now, fellow. I'm not mean like I used to be. I just held my peace. I'm thinking it still. 
But I ain't said nothing. But he goes on and he said, I was coming, but I got to work. And well, I'd just be honest with you, Brother Greg. I'm only good for one Sunday a month. Once a month is about all I'm good for. I said, well, brother, Jesus went and hung on a cross once for you, so I guess if he done it once for you, then that's good enough for you to do it once for him. Boy, the phone got quiet. We go down and we'll get a little bit of do better and then we'll turn around and we won't worship God, we won't praise God, we won't glorify God, but I know this man's in trouble and he's still in trouble, but yet he will not find time to go to God, but yet he expects God to get him out of his problems. Then if God doesn't do it, we blame Jesus for it. Where was you at? What was going on? Well, <laughs> you didn't need me. You didn't worship me. You weren't praising me. You wasn't having a communication with me. You was not in communion with me. You was not intimate with me. I went down into the ship. Huh? You know basically what you do when you, you adults, when you go to sleep, you go where? To the bedchamber. Jesus said, I went to the bedchamber. I went to lay down. But you wouldn't get intimate with me. You wasn't coming to me. You didn't go to where I was at. But now we find ourselves that he was asleep because we wasn't with him. Then we blame him for it. And they lunched forth, but as they sell as they sailed he fell asleep and there came down a storm of wind on the lake and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy and they came to him and awoke him saying master master we perish then he arose and stretched then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water and they ceased and there was a calm and he said unto them where is your faith? And they being afraid wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds and the water, and they obey him. What kind of storm are you going through today? What kind of problems has arose? Do you even know where Jesus Christ is? He's been with you. He come to you. He got you to get into the ship. And he said, let's go on over on the other side. Huh? He's began a journey with you. He's right here. But have you kept him awake to perform the things that needs to be done in our storms of life? Are we worrying about, where are you at, God? Why am I having trouble? Why is my family having trouble? Why is my marriage having trouble? Why is my children doing this? Why can't I get a job? And if I got a job, why can't I, why can't I, I make it produce? Why am I still struggling? Why am I in poverty? Why am I in problems? Why have I got all these problems? He said, because you ain't got me awake. If you don't keep me awake, I'm going to sleep. Huh? You ever thought about it? Have you ever thought about it? This is the 4th of July weekend. This is a celebration of our independence. We have been caught in a storm of life. We've been caught in troubles. But we need to break away and begin to thank God that our forefathers done what they did and gave us an opportunity to say to Jesus, you're not asleep, you're wide awake, and you can speak to the storms of life and change everything that there is. I might be on the lake and every ship may be tossing and turning but my God is not asleep my God is not dead my God is alive my God is well my God is the Lord Jesus Christ and without him there is no other God I want you to know you can call on whatever you want to they can call on Buddha they can call on Muslim they can call on Ali they can call on whatever they want to but none of them can raise the hair on a goose back. 
but the Lord Jesus Christ can change the color of it. He can make that old, what was that old ugly swan, the little story, ugly duckling. He can take that old ugly duckling and turn it into the most beautiful swan, the most beautiful thing that you could ever look at. Some of you look, you married him. You know how ugly he was. <laughs> now you look at him and you're proud of him. And that's what Jesus does. Yes. He takes you in. He marries you. He's intimate with you. And he makes you the most beautiful person in the world. We have not because we ask not. We don't know where we're going, so we can't find it. We're not seeking for it. But if you put all these together and realize that all you need to do is wake the Lord Jesus up, He'll change your destination. He'll make everything great. The old song says, what a grand and glorious feeling just to know. <laughs> what a grand and glorious feeling just to know. This morning, I don't care what the storm is. I don't care how big that boisterous wind in, it means nothing. All it means is that we've allowed God to go to sleep in our life. Come on. We put Him to sleep. You know how you've done that? You bored Him to death. Huh? You bored God to death and He went to sleep to you. He's alive and well to other folks. But we are struggling. We are having troubles. The church, and I don't mean that, that Sardis. I mean the church is sick. The church is not realizing that we're crossing over into a new day. We don't realize that the old things are going away. And there's a happy, happy, happy day of rejoicing Bless you, Lord. huh yeah. how did you finish up the 4th of July what was your celebration mine was I sat on my chair in my house while my neighbors was blowing off fireworks everywhere around I heard them but I would not go outside to look at them I said they're having a great time I asked my wife. She was down, down south with Brother Red and them, and I was up with Dad up here. We sort of spent our, our 4th of July separated. And I asked her, she said, oh, I was telling her about them celebrating all around us. And she said, well, if we would have stayed, I'm sure that they would have blowed fireworks off at Brother Red's. They do every year. When nighttime comes and the meeting's over with, they have a great celebration. But where's our celebration at? Are we sitting in our chair too lazy to go outside and enjoy the beautiful things that God has got for us? We gripe and grumble and complaining instead of rejoicing and worshiping Him. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will enter His gates with what? Did you? I will enter His courts in praise. Have you? Have you worshipped God? Have you lifted Him up? Have you made sure He's not asleep at the steering wheel? Have you went down inside the bedchamber with God and created a world that is brilliantly, that you're excited about? These things is for you. Don't worry about what's going on in the world. Daddy always said it's better to make $3 a day and be happy than $300 a day and be miserable. We know without a shadow of a doubt, Brother Richard sitting back there, they came and just about shut his job completely down. They took him from 60 hours a week down to he wouldn't even get in 20 hours a week. You know what the testimony was? They were putting more money in the bank at 20 hours a week than they were being able to save at 60 hours a week. Why? Because Jesus was not asleep 
in their ship. He was alive and well. They learned the secret. Keep him awake. Don't, let, don't bore him to death. Don't make him want to get away from you. Let him want to be intimate with you. Then we'll find out. I don't care what it is. I don't care if you're young. I don't care if you're old. It doesn't matter what it is. When Jesus is awake, the storms of life will cease. When Jesus is awake, the storms of life will cease. Amen. Give the Lord a great big hand clap. Thank God, Brother Stan. We got a great report on him. 2,300 and something is what the count was when they declared that he was a dead man. <laughs> you can't die when Jesus has got you. Do you know that? It's impossible. When Jesus has got you, when the storms of life are raging, and they say, Stan, you're going to die. Stan went back the other day and told him, said they, they down to 400 and something. Well, guess what? When he does it again, he's going to find out they're lower than that. He was away over there in Alabama. Could have spent his weekend in Alabama, but he chose to come back to be in church this morning. Why? Because I needed him here. I didn't need him in Alabama. I needed my brother with me. So I know that when he is giving all to God, do you think God's going to shortchange him? No. no. When you're doing all for God, do you think God's going to shortchange you? No. I don't care if you don't even have a job. When you're doing all for God, he said, I will supply your needs according to my riches or to his riches. You just got to understand who his is in glory everything you cannot go lacking when Jesus is awake in your ship amen hallelujah anybody need prayer this morning daddy yeah your daddy needs prayer your dad father in the name of Lord Jesus Christ we come on behalf of Bill Green this morning calling his name out Father, as you call the name of Lazarus from the dead, I call Bill Green out from that deathness of pain, that suffering, that aggravation. Lord, let him become awake in you, and you awaken him, and Lord, deliver him from the suffering God. And we praise you for doing it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Your dad's back. Father, you see Brother Stan. He's not here praying for him because you have healed him. You delivered him. We give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. Lord, we thank you for him every day. We worship you for him every day. God, we thank you for what you've accomplished in him. But Lord, now his own natural daddy has some issues, Father. And Lord, this man has seen a great resurrection in his own son now Lord let him see a resurrection in his back Lord let the pain cease let it cease let it go away Lord let it be delivered and healed with a miracle as we speak in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ declaring that this will give you honor and give you glory because we know who performed the miracle and your name is the Lord Jesus Christ we praise you hallelujah Anyone else? Well, hallelujah. Glory. All right. Uh, remember the little things that we said. Uh, it's going to be taking place here shortly. I want to thank Christian, and he's not here this morning, but uh, Christian got out, and he cut the grass out here. Uh, I would thank Brother Matthew, but the only thing he done was worked on our lawnmowers that me and Christian could get the job done. I thought he was weed eating, and uh, he found that it was more important to talk. It's amazing. 
I know why the elders say, don't let nobody have no cell phone when a job's going on. No, Brother Matthew, he did get our lawnmowers running enough that we could get the grass cut to what it's going on. There's things that needs to be done around here. We got less than a month, or just right over a month, before camp meetings here. We need a lot of paint work done. We need a lot of people to come in and, and take time. Well, Brother Greg, I don't know how to paint. You know how to run a little piece of sandpaper. You can come and prep and get things ready to paint. You can come in and help. But we need to get some uh, weed killer and, and take that ground out yonder on that bank unless you want to cut the grass. I, personally, I don't want to ride a lawnmower on that hillside. But if you do, that's fine. You know, you can go out there and you can take a push more if you want to. There's one down there. You can push it if you want to. I don't care. But I would suggest that we get some weed killer. We take it down. I've got enough pine straw. We ain't got to worry about it. We'll cover it up in pine straw and make it look pretty for camp meeting. Huh? There's things that needs to be done to beautify the works of God. And let the world know we're not sitting still, but we're alive and well because our Father is awake and He's alive and well. And we can get this thing beautified up. There's a lot of people coming in. I was asked over the weekend when we were starting and that they'd be coming out of Kentucky and different areas. So we want to prepare for that. And uh, let's do something for God. We had a year to do it. Now we've got five months. Hmm? Something, isn't it? Y'all remember January 1st? It ain't January 1st no more. We done over the halfway mark. Have you done what you needed to do for God? I haven't. I haven't. I've been slack. I've been blaming everything else but me. So we won't remember that. Remember the ones we asked for prayer. Remember the service tonight at 5 o'clock. Thank God that this church has got air conditioning. Even my, even though my back says right now it don't. But thank God we got air conditioner. We're not having to go downstairs. We're able to come in and, and have some singing and some music. Old Dad got over there this morning on the piano, and he was really doing a great job. His, his mind's good this morning. We want to thank God for that. He was asking about his guitar. As a matter of fact, it's sitting right under Dad. I see it. Get his guitar. He's wanting to play some more. 81 years old, and he's still wanting to do something for God. Here I am, 47, uh, trying to figure out, or 48 years old, and I'm sitting here just wondering, Oh, my God, Lord, I'm so tired. I'm so this. I can't do nothing for you, God. I don't even want to do anything. Here an 81-year-old man has said, Hey, man, I'm, my name's Joshua. My name is Caleb. I'm ready to get out of this old world and get into a new one. Where are we at? Are we celebrating now? Let's have a great celebration. Amen. If you go to Lord Jesus Christ, He will go with you. Shake hands, be friendly. See you tonight at 5 o'clock.